How was your first session of the class this morning? Oh, they wore me out. Oh. They were so eager to get started. They asked so many questions, and they're so young. <laughs> I guess it's a sign of old age. Oh. <laughs> Did you enjoy your date last night? Yeah, it was really great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Joe, he's, he's so easy and relaxed to be with. We didn't have a very fancy dinner or anything. We just went and had milkshakes and hamburgers down at the pier. Then we took the ferry across the harbor. Oh, it sounds lovely. Yeah, it was. You know, it, it's been so long since I've had a real date. It felt like a whole new experience. And you ought to have a lot more of them. Yeah, I, I just, I still felt bad leaving Jeremy and Tommy alone with Mrs. Ryan to take care of. No. <laughs> Let me give you one piece of advice. These are wonderful years now, and you mustn't waste them. Now, you've devoted your whole life to your parents and your vocation of nursing. Now is the time to get out and enjoy yourself and live it up and have fun. Heaven knows you've earned it. I'll make what you said. Tell me, how was your dinner last night? Where'd you have dinner? Oh, uh, well, we just uh, went across the street. I ate with Heather and Jeff. Did you enjoy it? Yeah, the dinner was all right. You know, Anne, I, um, I found myself feeling a little sorry for Heather yesterday, late afternoon at the Weber. She, she actually broke down over the frustration of not knowing what's happened to Stephen Lars. Did she? Mm -hmm. I don't think any of us have realized how deeply troubled she's been by that, and... Her miscarriage last winter. Now, that's a lot of tragedy for one young girl to deal with. Oh, I know. I know. You know, it could, it could explain a lot about why she has this almost unnatural attachment to the Taylor baby, too. I had the same idea last night. Yeah. And it is probably responsible for her wanting to adopt Jeremy. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, Jeff. I, I forgot to buy it again. Terrific. Well, there's some instant on the thing. Honey, come on. It's been three weeks since we've had coffee in this house. Look, why don't you take a little time off and do some grocery shopping, please? Jeff, that's easier said than done. I am working two jobs now, and it isn't easy to get away from either one of them. Yeah, well, it seems to me it's a matter of priorities, and I'd hate to think your home and husband were low on the list. Hey, you know better. All I know is I haven't had a decent cup of coffee in this house for years. Well, I promise you that I will pick some up. And you will forgive me when you find out what I've been up to. I'm planning something for your birthday, and it's very special. Great. Listen, I hope you're watching the budget while you're doing all this planning. we got to start putting some money away in case the court decides to let us have Jeremy. Well, Jeff, we don't have to worry about that. Jeremy comes with a yearly allotment, and that will certainly pay for all the expenses he causes us. Honey. I've already told you that allotment is going straight into a savings account so we can gain some, some uh, interest on it. Listen, uh, what's the magazine business all about? What are you doing? Oh, I'm just going through some of these old issues, getting some recipes and things. I'm starting to get very domestic. <clears throat> That's just fine, but, uh... Before you get too fancy, remember to get some coffee, will you? This is I terrible. I said I would, I promise you. Oh, now who could that be this time of the morning? Hey, it's noon, remember? I got the late shift. Well, it seems early to me. Yes? Mrs. Weber? Yes. Hello, I'm Helen Washburn. I'm the uh, caseworker appointed by the court. I pay you an informal visit. I understand you're interested in adopting Jeremy Hewitt? Yes, why don't you come in? I'll be just sleeping. How are you? I'm fine. Good. You know, I had such a relaxing time yesterday at Laura's wedding that I'm beginning to think that that man's never going to call me and he's going to leave town and just go back to Florida. Anyway, <coughs> come on and sit down. Ah, uh, thank you. Why are you so sure that this caller comes from Florida? Well, all that talk that he had, you know, about the adoption. You even said yourself that frequently in families where there's an adoption, um, members of the family... Try to, uh, try to get the child back. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember saying that, but that was before I was familiar with the case. 
Now, since I've spoken with Lee Baldwin, he assures me that the grandmother was the only relative around and that she gave up the child freely. Well, yes, that's true. But, no, I, I still feel that those calls are somehow related to PJ's adoption. Anyway, have you found any trace of the grandmother? No, not yet, nothing. But we still have a man in Florida checking up on it. Such a sweet woman. I remember her very well. I know she'd really be upset if she knew that this was happening. <sighs> Have I shown you this? Uh, no. <laughs> <sighs> and what is this? This is PJ's legal adoption papers. Huh. Issued to us from the state of Florida. That makes PJ legally ours so that no one could ever take him away from us. To me, those are very significant and very important papers. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can imagine they would be, yeah. You know, the night that, uh, that Lee Baldwin gave those to us, we had a, a big party here. I can remember it like it was yesterday. <laughs> Peter and I were so happy. Mm, sure you were. We, we lost our, our little girl, Martha, and um, we tried unsuccessfully to, uh, to adopt a boy. We tried twice. Peter and I just felt that we weren't meant to have children. So that's why we had such a big party. <laughs> Susan was here, you know, Heather's cousin. She came with Mrs. Grant. And, um, let's see who else. Was, uh, Heather here? Or were, were Heather and Jeff here, too? Oh, yes, of course. You know, Heather's my best friend. Mm. Uh, thank you for showing this to me. Oh, you're welcome. You know, I'll tell you, it really scares me to think that we could be burglarized one night and someone could take that and not even know what's inside of it. No, no, no. You mustn't be scared about that. Because at the very bottom line, there's another copy in Florida, and you can always get another one. Uh-uh. This oh. is mine. This copy is mine. <laughs> and with everything that's been happening, that's a very significant piece of paper. Have either you or Peter ever tried to erase or erase any of the tape that's on the machine in the basement? Erase? No. Why would we do that? No, I'm just asking. But it's just such a strange question. Well, the machine may be malfunctioning again. Really? Yeah, well, there's a couple of spaces of blank tape on the machine where there shouldn't be. Now, I can take the machine back to the lab and have it checked out. It might be racing itself, but... Boy, you really had a lot of trouble with that machine. Yeah, well, the funny thing is, I have never had any trouble with it before this case. Well, if you took that one, um, would you install another one? No, nope, I don't think so. Because I really don't believe that our friend is going to be calling you here at home anymore. Well, I'm, I'm glad you're so confident that he's not going to be calling me. The only thing is, um, I guess the job would be over for you. No, this job isn't over by a long shot. It won't be over until I've exposed this person, whoever he is. Well, if he's gone back to Florida, there's not much of a chance of that. Yes, but you see, I really don't think that's what's happened. Now, I don't wish to make you afraid, but I think this person, whoever he is, is trying to bring you to your breaking point for his own neurotic purposes. And I think he's not going to give up until he does. Well, I, I must say you're not making me feel very secure. Well, I'm sorry, but uh, we're just trying to be ready for him this time. Let him make the next move so we can find out what it is, where he's at. Then maybe we can get to the bottom of this entire mess. Looks like a job that's going to take 10 years to finish. No, I'm just going to do it until I get tired of it, and then I'm going to throw it all out. I'm just sorry that it had to look like this when Miss Washburn came by. Well, I don't think she paid too much attention to that. I am glad I was here when she paid her visit, though. Yeah, well, I'm not. What? Jeff, how could you tease me about not having coffee in the house in front of her? And how could you possibly ever tell her about Stephen Lars? Because it's true, and I figured it'd be better she heard it from us. Don't you realize what a terrible mother it makes me out to be? No, I don't. Yeah, well, it does. I'll never forgive myself for what happened in New York, and now it's going to be a black mark against us when it comes to adopting Jeremy. Well, I think you're wrong. Now, I was watching her face, and she looked very touched by your reaction. 
I think she's being pretty sympathetic. Well, I'm not so sure. Listen, I wish you'd call Howard today and ask him if you can find out anything about what she put in that report about us. No, I mean, that would be pointless. Now, that report is going to become uh, confidential court material, the same way the report on Anne's going to be. They won't let anybody know what's in them. Well, then what happens now? Well, I suppose the, the judge will weigh and evaluate both reports, and uh, I guess he'll talk to Jeremy before he makes his final decision. What can an 11-year-old tell a judge? How he feels, who he wants to be with most. That's the silliest thing I've ever heard. A child that age doesn't know what's best for him. Well, all the same, I think he'll be consulted. Well, maybe we should have him over this evening and, and do all of his favorite things then. Honey, I don't think we have to bribe him. Well, I didn't mean it that way. I mean, just to make him happy. Oh, at least Miss Washburn didn't ask about this stupid recording device on the phone. Oh, Jeff, I wish we could get rid of it. Honey, we can't. As long as there's the slightest chance that Jameson will call, we've got to keep it here. Mm -hmm. Listen, I gotta run. See you at the hospital later. Bye-bye. Okay. Oh. Do something about this. <laughs> Go on and raise me again and pray that Kelly doesn't get suspicious. Yes, is Larry Joe Baker there? I see. Um, well, would you tell him that Heather calls when he gets back from his deliveries? Thank you. I yes, Heather, he knows the number. second person that Diana trusts with pizza. It's a very special honor. And I'm flattered, but I must tell you that Jeremy and Joe Kelly gave me a lot of help yesterday. Uh -huh. He spent most of the afternoon with us. He even went to the park when we took PJ to see Do you see any sign of that man that Heather has seen watching her? No, I'm not a trace either. And I really kept my eyes open, too. But for some reason, Joe felt for sure that he wasn't going to be there yesterday. Really? Why not? Well, that's me. Joe is very secret about his theories on the case. Well, I'm just glad to hear that he has some theories, but Diana's convinced whoever it is has given up. Oh, I hope she's right. She's been through enough already. Do you really think it might be over? I don't know, Anne. I'm just waiting to see you. I'm holding my breath. Yeah. Oh, hi, Jeff. Morning. Lovely, Anne. Yeah. Good morning. Did you stay late last night? Oh, I wasn't too late, actually, but I was grateful to get the late shift today so I could sleep in a little bit. Why don't you put it down? Yeah, for just a second. Then I'm going to grab some coffee and uh, race upstairs. Listen, Annie, uh, I probably shouldn't be telling you this, but if I were you, I'd expect a visit from a caseworker in the not-too-distant future. She showed up on our doorstep this morning, totally unannounced. i got to tell you, Heather got a little upset by it. Is this about the adoption? Yeah, yeah. Why was Heather upset? Well, the apartment was, well, in sort of a mess, and Heather and I were kind of lounging around in our robes, not exactly the impression we wanted to make. What was this woman like? Well, she seemed nice enough. Her name is uh, Miss Washburn, I think. And Heather got real mad at me for telling her about uh, Stephen Lawrence, but I figured we should level with her. Yeah. Well, it's usually the best policy. <clears throat> well, you know, the way Heather reacted last night, uh, far more deeply troubled about everything that's happened than I ever realized. Yeah, I'm afraid that's true, Audrey. You know, right after the miscarriage, she, uh, well, she was terrified to tell me that she could no longer have children without risking her own life. And Peter, well, ever since then, she's uh, kept an awful lot of things bottled up inside. Well, I was hoping I could get her to come see you on a professional basis. Hey, I'll be glad to see her whenever she wants to come in. I no, a traumatic loss of a child can be to a woman. Yeah, Heather's had to go through it twice now. 
Yes, I know. Even Diana, who's had a lot more time to adjust, still carries the emotional scars of losing Martha. I saw proof of that when that monster called and blamed her for Martha's death. That man must be a hopeless psychotic to say things like that to Diane. Yes, in all probability, yes. I told Kelly to be on the lookout for someone who was mentally disturbed, maybe even with a record of mental illness. Yeah, that sounds frightening. Yeah, it is. I wouldn't say it to Diana because it frightened her even more than it. she already is. That's what I think all the same. Oh, I, I'm sorry I cut it so close, Diana. I just couldn't get started this morning. That's all right. Don't worry about it. I've got everything together. Uh, PJ's still asleep, but I imagine he's going to be waking up here. Oh, good. I'll make a nice lunch for him. Okay, well, let's see. I've got everything here in my hat and my purse. Oh, I meant to put the strong box back in Peter's office. What's in the strong box? Oh, you know, just kind of legal papers, uh, passports, things like that. But the most important paper, at least to me, are PJ's legal adoption papers from Florida. <laughs> I had it out today because I went to show Joe. Oh, I'd love to see them sometime. I mean, when you have the time. Oh, I'll take a minute. We could do it right now. <sighs> you know, they may not mean much to anybody else, but I'll tell you, they really mean the world to me. Oh, yes, of course. Maybe you should uh, put them in the safe deposit box at the bank, just so nothing happens to them. That's really a good idea. I don't have time to do it today. I'll do it tomorrow. Mm. There's no point in taking chances. Absolutely. That is a very good idea. Definitely tomorrow. Diane, is there anything special I can do for you today? Well, if you could drop the cleaning off for me on your way to the park, I'd really appreciate it. Sure. Where is it? It's on my bed. Two suits of Peter's, a uh, skirt and sweater of mine. I'd be glad to. Oh, there he goes. Well, listen, I better uh, kiss him and say goodbye.